You want me to review the swordfish? Yes, I have a chance to talk shit about it. Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome to another episode of. Sorry, I really couldn't think of anything clever this episode. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the worker swordfish. Yes, the very controversial worker swordfish. Well, controversial in my books because of the name. So at this point, I want to give a huge shout out to nfstrike.com for sponsoring this. Not exactly the whole thing. Basically, nfstrike.com sponsored me the swordfish shell as well as the full auto kit but the reason why it took so long and i have to apologize is because even though i had the swordfish shell as well as the full auto kit i did not have a proper five wheel cage set and without that you guys know that this is not gonna work and this particular vector kit the clear vector kit is recycled from the one that i used on the galaxy strife i'm not so sure if you guys saw that i pimped up my galaxy strife with the clear vector kit but here it is i've recycled it brought it over from there to here and Basically, I made a clear Chris Vector-ish kind of nerf mod for the swordfish and I just wanted to say that. So, I'll say it in Chinese just so that Teresa can understand because Teresa is the one that reached out to me. So, a huge thank you to Teresa as well. Thank you for reaching out to me. I want to tell you very much because I know this video has been waiting for a long time. Actually, I've already received this shell for the past few weeks. But the problem is that this shell is not completely missing. And to be honest with you guys, when I first saw that email from nfstrike.com, I was like, you want me to review the swordfish? Yes, I have a chance to talk shit about it. But then after performing the entire build, I realized that, well, there are some shitty points about it, but it really is quite an awesome shell. Now, don't jump to conclusions yet. Let me show you guys the internal shot first of all, then we'll talk about it later on. So check it out. This is the finished internals of the Worker Swordfish and yes, everything here is by Worker. It's all Worker branded. Worker Canted Flywheel Cage and Worker Full Auto Kit. And the reason why I'm using everything Worker branded is because the first thought that came to mind was Worker parts should be able to work with a Worker shell. I wanted to get some other stuff but then I was thinking I just wanted to be on the safer side. I didn't want to get something that I would not be able to use in the shell and that's the reason why. Simple straightforward reason. I'm not gonna hide anything from you guys. Now I'm gonna give Worker some props because honestly speaking although this whole thing looks pretty messy i mean if you look at it it looks a little bit messy but they actually did think this through and planned this quite well everything you see here all of these screw pots they are all made into the shell they are all prepared there ready for it to be used with their full auto kit and it's actually quite cool and the thing is they actually did provide an instruction manual it looks like this so it's two languages but the english translation is a little bit tricky because you know it's just direct translated i believe but you'll get the gist of it especially when you look at this they actually have instructions for if you're using a standard strife shell and on the flip side are instructions for if you want to use the kit with the swordfish shell so they included a parts list and i won't be going into detail because you know it's you've seen it here it's actually quite simple it's really really straightforward they've numbered out all the different parts and they actually numbered it out here as well so you could actually look at the whole circuit diagram like that and look at the numbers just to refer for the correct wires and then perform the installation or you could also look at the step-by-step -step instructions and they do have instructions for say for example if you want to use the standard battery tray or if you want to change it to an external connector like I did. But this is quite a no-brainer. If you guys have performed any Strife mod that required you to change out your batteries to a LiPo, for example, it's really a no-brainer. But these instructions are actually pretty straightforward. I followed it and it was quite easy to refer to. So this, I feel, worker deserves some props for that. Now, all of these switches, they do play a part. And this is the checker switch. And the reason why you have a checker switch there is because for every single time you release the firing trigger, you want to make sure that this pusher comes back to the fully resting position. You know how I've actually mentioned to you guys whenever I'm using the XSW full auto kit in Strives, whenever I let go of the firing trigger, sometimes the pusher piece is like kind of out, stuck halfway. This is the reason why they have this checker switch here, which is actually kind of cool. It works very much like the way a rapid strike system works. And the next thing that I want to point out is that in this whole setup, Worker has chosen to use the mechanical lock not an electronic lock for you to prevent accidental firing. See, unless the rev switch is depressed, then you're able to pull the standard trigger or the firing trigger. So this is the lock. So this is how it actually works. You won't be able to fire the pusher motor unless the rev switch is being pressed first. So what's happening here is when you pull the rev switch, 
this switch right here is checking whether or not it's being depressed by the pusher piece, as you guys can see. This means that here will be completely shut off and it'll not be working. Then when you pull the trigger, this will start to move because everything's in the correct position. Once the trigger is released, this is gonna start detecting whether or not the pusher piece is in the fully resting position or if it's still outside. If it's still out here and this switch is still in the open position, this motor will continue to move until this happens and then it'll cut this motor off. So that will prevent this pusher piece from stopping anywhere out here always in the fully returned position, which is actually pretty cool. You know, uh, I like the way they thought about this and I like this particular execution. I think this is really cool. And I wanted to give a shout out to them for this because I'll be honest with you guys, if not for this shell, this is still definitely achievable for sure, but it's just gonna be a really, really messy job with a lot of extra steps and a lot more work just to make sure that this switch, this checker switch is set at the exact correct position. But because this shell is made in such a way to actually accommodate for this, this is actually pretty good planning and I'm not gonna deny that. This deserves some credit for sure. Also, the next thing is that there is a voltmeter here that you can adjust to change the rate of fire of the pusher motor. You could turn it clockwise and then raise the voltage. So higher voltage means higher ROF and you could also lower the voltage so you get a lower ROF. That depends on the kind of voltage input that you're gonna have. So a higher voltage battery, of course, you're gonna get a higher ROF then you can actually lower it down using this over here. But for me, I generally run 2S LiPos. So that ROF is actually quite comfortable for me. So now I'm gonna show you guys a quick demonstration on how this whole thing works. And initially when I was testing to see if my circuitry was correct, I was kind of thrown off. I didn't know what was going on because I didn't have this in place and so every time I depressed the rev switch this would start to spin because this pusher should be pressing this switch down so that was something that took me a little while to realize and I have to admit that initially I thought that I did something wrong till I actually took a step back and I thought about it and I gave this a shot and I realized wow this is actually pretty awesome so let me show you guys but first I want to remove this pusher piece so I can show you guys exactly what in the world I'm talking about and I'm also gonna remove the trigger because I don't want that spring to be flying everywhere when I'm doing this demonstration for you guys. Connecting a 2S LiPo, Voltron, 7.4 volts, 2S LiPo. So here we go, this is what happens when none of that is in place and you pull the rev switch. Check out this piece over here. See, the flywheels move too. Oh yeah, one thing I wanna tell you guys, there's no motor braking in this system simply because I didn't do the motor braking. I could, but I'm just lazy at this point, okay? So here we go, once again, check this out. But if this switch is depressed, check this out. This doesn't move at all. So this is what happens when you do this. And here's the next thing. Even though they chose to use the mechanical lock here, you could leave it in place, you could also not have it in place because it's also safe. This will not work unless this is first depressed. See that? So it's actually really cool. I thought this was really well done by Worker. And now I'm gonna put all of the pieces back. Oh wait, let me just shift this correctly first. Here we go. Now everything's back in place. Here we go. This is how everything is gonna work. Now I'm gonna be using my left hand to engage the trigger and my right thumb to be pulling on the rev switch because I don't want this spring to be flying off. But this is how it works. Well, the spring still came off anyway. But you guys notice that no matter how many times or how many ways or the random timings that actually engage the pusher switch, this pusher piece will always stop in this completely resting position, which is the coolest thing about this whole full auto kit. I'm adding on this part of the video because I realized that I got too carried away talking about the performance and the internals of the blaster that I didn't even talk about the shell itself. So here we go. Here's some details about the shell that I have no idea what its purpose is and also just to run over the general aesthetics of it. First of all, this shell doesn't come with a full auto kit. Basically, it comes with a single fire system. So that means you're gonna have this rev trigger here. You're also gonna have this particular trigger. It comes with this clear mag release lever, which is quite cool. I mean, this is the standard worker style. And then also, you won't have this particular pusher. You'll have the standard I guess the arm style pusher where it's just single fire. And then you'll have this muzzle piece. And this muzzle piece is unfortunately not compatible with 
say for example your strife and other kits like body kits that are meant for the strife will not work here because this part is a little bit different. I mean, you guys can tell the shell is different. So here's some details on the shell. It is made of this frosted plastic and then it has these really, really clear details. And I like this clear detail, although I have no idea what this design really is. Uh, I can't even tell if it is meant to be a fish, but it looks like a sail or a mountain or something. And then you have the worker logo here. And this is kind of strange because I don't know why this curved thing, this asymmetrical design or you know uh, whatever this style is, is done. And then you have the worker logo in there. And then this is a close-up of the fish scales design or motif on the grip. And well, you can see it goes all the way up here. Yep, so that is why to me it is pretty obnoxious because you can see how it sticks out here. And uh, yeah, you hear that. It's just, it's just uncomfortable, you know. And on the flip side, well, this is a good thing I want to point out. This is the expanded battery cover and this does not come with the shell. The original shell comes with a flat version. I have it somewhere else, I'm sorry. But you have to get this separately if you guys want to change the battery source into a, say for example, a LiPo. In fact, actually when Worker made this, it wasn't even meant for a standard, I guess a standard kind of LiPo that we use. So if you guys are using 3S LiPos, it's probably not going to fit, you know, because it's only expanded this much. However, you could use other aftermarket Strife battery covers because this this particular spec works. So that's something that I want to point out. Also for this particular worker branded expanded battery cover, I like the fact that the motif or the detail actually matches the shell as well. So you could see it's part of the design, which is which is something that is nice, you know? Right, next things I'm gonna talk about, there's some indents here, and that's meant to, I guess, kind of give a little bit more detail for the motors, especially if you're using a parallel aligned flywheel cage, then these will line up very nicely, but you can see that I'm using a canted flywheel cage, and so the motors don't actually line up with these details in there. And the thing is, this shell doesn't have that extra piece outside like the Strife does, so unfortunately, if you guys are gonna go for your 180 motors, you're gonna have to drill out a slot for this because it would not fit, and I don't know if anyone has ever made any motor covers for the swordfish. So if you do cut that out, it might look a little bit ugly if your cutting skills are not that great. And also there's no real protection if you know uh, it rains or anything, some water gets in. But up here, uh, it does look a little bit strange from the front view because you know this part is so much more exaggerated. And the top rail is a Nerf spec rail as well as this rail at the bottom over here. This is a Nerf spec rail. And then now since we're on this side, well, I'm going to point out that you do have these same details here, but uh, I don't know what kind of purpose it serves because I, I don't know, it's just why would you have that detail? This is uncalled for. The next thing I want to point out is that you have these little slots here. One, two on this side and one more on the flip side. Oh, that's two actually. So that's two, two on each side. And I have no idea why they have to be indented in. You know what I mean? Like it's not flush, it's an actual slot. You guys can see that. It goes all the way in. The thing is, it's not a through slot. So maybe in future, worker has ideas to put like rail attachments here. I'm not so sure, but you could see that it's two on each side and they are spaced out of the same distance. You know, to me, like it's just strange. You also have this window. See, it's, it's pretty obvious, you know, this thing is pretty obvious. I have no idea what this is for, maybe an ammo counter, you know, because, you know, the mag is going to sit here. So I'm just assuming that in future, workers going to plan for an ammo counter, maybe a voltmeter, I'm not so sure. And the next thing I want to find out, I have no idea what this is for, but there is a switch. It is a floating switch. And I watched Walcom's video on this as well, and he doesn't really have an idea why this is here also. Maybe in the future, workers going to make a full auto select fire kit. I'm not so sure, but right now this is... It's just floating. Even with the stock internals, this has no real function. You can actually see that it is an L-shaped piece and this just doesn't engage anything both internally and externally. So I have no idea what's going on. I also took a close look at these two screw ports and initially I thought maybe it was them planning ahead to add another switch there. But then after measuring, I noticed that these slots are actually much further apart than what these slots are for the standard switches that they have in there. So I have no idea what worker has for future plans for this particular shell. But it is interesting at this point of time, I want to see what they have up in store. And uh, the last thing I want to point out is that this particular area here, you guys can see some white marks, some, I guess, some damage to the screw port slot. And you can see some stretch marks on the plastic. And I don't know why this is present because it's not present on the flip side. It's just this side. So maybe some kind of a manufacturing defect. I'm not so sure, but it is there. 
And that's basically it everyone. This is the swordfish shell without the Chris Vector parts because I decided that I should show it to you guys because after all, NF Strike sent me this shell so I'm talking about the shell. Welcome back and basically that was the internals and what I did to this swordfish and... Oh, I got tape. But yes, that was the internals and you guys can tell I am quite impressed with the way everything is laid out in this. So that, I think, is the true advantage of having the Swordfish shell. Now, if you guys want to purchase the Swordfish shell, in my opinion, please purchase it with the end goal of making it a full auto Swordfish with the worker kit. Okay, just make sure that it is all worker stuff because I think that it is the only way to go and when you go in that direction, honestly, it is pretty awesome. I'm going to give you guys a quick firing demonstration and I'll be using the same 2S LiPo that I showed in that internals video because it is awesome. And of course, the main difference is that I've decked it out with the clear vector kit by worker. Uh, I believe that this was originally done by Yokyo. Oh my god, Yokyo, yes, where is Yokyo now? Wow, oh, just got goosebumps thinking about the Yokyo kit when I first received it, that was like, oh my goodness, a shot of nostalgia right there, like just some super flashback. But anyway, I've got a 12 dart mag here filled up with vinyl tip darts. Yes, I know that a lot of you recommended that I don't use vinyl tip darts anymore, but then with this particular flywheel set, this is fine. This is a canted flywheel cage by Worker, and I know for a fact that you can use vinyl tip darts with this, and this is only for full length because, well, it is a full length pusher. So here we go. Real quick firing demonstration, just get the mag in, all 12 darts gonna be fired out, here we go. Wait, 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 let me just shift a little bit. Hopefully I won't be out of frame because uh, I kind of zoomed in a little bit on this. So uh, I maybe I'll just fire it. Maybe I'll fire it this way, what do you guys think? Let's try this for the first time, let's see how it goes, okay? So if it screws up or if it looks ugly, I apologize, but I'm not really apologetic anyway, so here we go. Okay, I kind of made a mess now. But yeah, all darts out, no jams, fires very well. There you go, firing demonstration. I hope you guys are happy with that. I'm just kidding. So really just a little bit more information about the build. Now I am using the expanded battery tray by Worker. And the one thing that I want to say is that I am quite disappointed that this particular thumb screw, even though it is by Worker, it doesn't work very well with workers uh i guess battery covers for the swordfish and the reason why is because this is just like you know it's loose you know it's loose so once you get it unscrewed basically this whole thumb screw will just drop out so worker uh couldn't you do something about this worker like honestly like couldn't you do something about this you know and if you guys look closely, basically you'll see a piece of vinyl tube here. And the reason why that is done is because I realized that if I don't have the vinyl tube, basically I could screw this thumb screw all the way in, like flush, flush to the battery cover, and it'll eventually end up scratching the battery cover right here. And that is kind of obnoxious. And not just that, when it goes all the way in, basically it doesn't even tighten, it doesn't become snug like the way, you know, when you tighten screws to the end, it doesn't happen. So basically the reason why I put the vinyl tube there is not just to act as a spacer to protect the battery cover, but as well as to give it that tension once I hit a certain point. So it becomes a little bit more snug. So worker, I basically fixed your goddamn problem. Such a simple solution, but it's just a hassle for me to do so. I mean, you guys made this, you could have made it a little bit better. So that's the main thing that I want to see. So now it is snug, see? No wobble, no play, nothing whatsoever. The next thing I want to talk about is this grip. This grip is pretty obnoxious. It is pretty uncomfortable. I have no idea why Worker went for this particular fish scale kind of design. I mean, it looks okay. I mean, I'm not a fan of the fish scale design, but maybe some of you are. Some of you might think, oh wow, this is really cool. But if you look at the rest of the blaster, it is very, very clean. It's got a slightly frosted look, and then it has this really clear design here, and it's very angular, very sharp, very aggressive looking, and then you suddenly have this thing over here, just, just, I don't know what you guys are thinking of. And then let's talk about having the vector shell, because you know, a lot of pictures of the swordfish show it being decked out with the blue version of the Chris Vector kit. And the thing about it is that, uh, I don't know why would you think that having a blue Chris Vector kit with a clear shell looks cool because I think it looks damn gaudy, you know, it looks strange because you have orange internals as well. It's a crazy strange mix in my opinion. It's just a personal thing really. So for me, I would very much prefer a completely clear kind of thing because it's the same color all throughout. And so I looked at the clear 
crease vector kit again and I realized that the texture on the vector here is kind of like a rough texture you know uh, not really just a smooth clean frosted kind of texture so this rough texture then you have this clear frosted thing kind of like very very fine frosted kind of finish and then you have some clear designs as well some really really smooth clean clear designs and then you have this funny fish scale thing here just it's just a complete design disaster in my opinion I don't know what you guys are doing there I just wish that you just got your stuff a bit more uniform because I don't think that worker would spend time to make a new vector kit in clear blue and have it completely smooth unless I'm completely wrong and if that's the case then I basically made myself look like a dick in my own video and if so then I am sorry, but this just isn't really working out for me, okay? Next, uh, this grip itself is not very ergonomic. You can see it's just a complete flat kind of, a, I guess, kind of mold. There's no contours on this besides that that fish scale design and just makes it really, really grippy, but not grippy in a good way. It's just a little bit uncomfortable, feels a little bit strange. If I were to describe it, basically, for lack of a better word, it feels blocky. You know, it feels just flat. I mean, it is a pretty nicely sized grip, I'll give it that, but it's just, it's not comfortable to hold at all. You know, like even this has some kind of contours here and this is way more comfortable than this. Like, honestly, I don't know, like you could have taken cue from this and made, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, not trying to give you ideas or anything, but I'm just, I'm just saying, you know. And basically that's the biggest two gripes I have of this shell. And the two gripes are focused on the same area, so that's kind of, kind of shitty, you know, kind of sucky. And also I read a lot of things online that you are not able to use other flywheel cages, you know, other branded flywheel cages. I'm not exactly sure which brands, but you know, like I mentioned in the earlier part of the video, I decided to go for everything worker branded because worker brand stuff should be working in the worker made shell. All in all, this is a awesome shell if you are going for a full auto kit with that checker switch up there. And this, in my opinion, is the best part, the standout feature of this entire worker blaster. I'm not gonna call it really a worker blaster. I mean, yeah, you guys know what I'm trying to say. So all in all, if you were to do the entire build like that, if you're going for the worker swordfish, basically just make it a worker swordfish with the worker full auto kit in it. And then that's the best way to go, in my opinion. As a shell on its own, I don't think it's anything particularly great. I don't actually think it's a very nice design. The shell alone looks kind of like luster, you know, versus say, for example, a standard stripe. I think the standard stripe actually has a lot more design nuance on it it looks a little bit cooler than a third-party shell and I was hoping that a third-party shell would look even better than what the original is you know and I'm comparing it to like say for example the Exus because that was made to be a replacement shell a third-party shell for the long shot internals and we're talking about say for example the prophecy now I don't think the prophecy looks very good on its own as a retaliator replacement but I think it looks damn good when you have all the other add-on parts you know like the honey badger Oh, is it called the honey badger? Yeah, I think it's called the honey badger. And now this, you know, I think it looks way better with this Chris Vector body kit put onto the swordfish shell. And that's my, my, that's my honest opinion, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video because basically that is it. That is the end of this video. Oh, I forgot to mention that I actually put some LaRue orange tactical rail indexing clips. That is such a mouthful to say, I'm sorry. But yes, I really like the LaRue indexing clips. You guys can tell already because you've seen me use it in many, many other builds that I've done so far. This is a pretty solid full auto blaster, especially with that checker. I, I know I keep repeating it, but this is really, really well thought out. I have to give them props for that. So if you're interested, get it at nfstrike.com. Once again, thank you to nfstrike.com for sending this over to me. This I've gotten on my own a long time ago, but you can also get the Chris Vector parts from nsstrike.com. You can get the internals from nsstrike.com, although this I got from Carousel Blaster Toys SG. Gonna give you guys a shout out because you deserve it. And basically that is it. We've come to the end of the video, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking all the way throughout. I hope that you enjoyed it because, well, I enjoyed making this. I enjoyed this build and I'm quite happy with the way it turned out right now. The shell itself, this grip part is not the best. I'm gonna try and think of a way that I can improve this. But all in all, very happy with the performance so far. Good job to work on all this. I think that it's really, really well thought out. Very, very nicely done for the full auto kit. But for the shell wise, I don't think it's very good, except for the fact that this shell is made for you to use with the worker full auto kit. And this is kind of awkward right now because I don't really know what to say. So I will just end the video here. You guys know the deal. Drills pay the bills and teamwork makes the dream work. And I'll catch all of you in the next video. Peace.